20 years of schooling and they put you on the day shift. Maybe this seems like an odd criticism, but when the plot synopsis described Jamie Foxx as a pool cleaner who is a secret vampire hunter, and the movie was called Day Shift, I thought it would begin by showing us a setup for what seemed to be the mundane life of a working class guy, his relationship with his ex-wife and daughter, and then a big reveal that he's actually a vampire hunter as the first major plot point. Instead, the first scene of the movie is a vampire fight scene. It gets right into the action, but I wanted to see more pool cleaning leading up to this. I just kept going, when are they gonna get to the pool cleaning scenes? Day Shift is at its best when it's providing martial arts action, and it's at its worst when it's trying to be heartfelt or funny. It reminds me of another Netflix movie, Gumpowder Milkshake, which also was an all-style, no-substance kind of movie with a fight scene in a bowling alley. Day Shift cost $100 million to make, yet it doesn't feel like a $100 million film. Most of it probably went to the actors. I enjoyed the soundtrack for Day Shift because it included ODB's Shimmy Shimmy Ya in one of those cliched, badass dudes walking in a wide shot scenes. The actual score ranged from generic instrumental rock to generic bouncy light comedy music. The composer for the film, Tyler Bates, did write the score for Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but the Guardians films are more known for the pop songs than the musical score. He also wrote the scores for John Wick 3 and Atomic Blonde, but the score for this movie just felt uninspired. Snoop Dogg is in the movie. As usual, he basically just plays himself like any movie he's in. He's actually not in that much of the movie. He walks around the office and women check out his ass in approval. He disappears for the second act and then shows back up for the finale. Dude really knows how to collect a paycheck, and I'm not gonna hate on that. Man gave us doggy style, and that's more than most men will accomplish in this life. Before I watch a movie, I usually look up the director, and the director, J.J. Perry, is a stuntman. His first stunt work was for the Johnny Cage character in the original Mortal Kombat film, a guilty pleasure of mine. He's worked on a long list of big Hollywood films. He's an insider who has been given the director's helm for this film, because of his background in stunt work. Chad Stahelski, who directed the John Wick films, is also a former stuntman, and it's part of the success of the John Wick franchise. Stahelski was a producer for this movie as well, and though Day Shift is comprised of a few well-directed, acted, and edited action scenes, it's stitched together by the most by-the-book buddy cop drama. In this department, we go by the book. By book which also happens to include vampires. Jamie Foxx plays the lead, Bud Jablonski, and he portrays the family man who is a secret badass. Even if the character development isn't the deepest, Jamie Foxx carries the film with his star power. He's a man who lies to his wife, but the movie lets us know it's okay because he's doing it to protect her. She's about to sell her home in the valley because of the absurd real estate market in California. She's going to take Bud's daughter away from him, there's the motivation. A picture of his daughter is taped to the steering wheel of his vehicle, so we don't forget. He loves his daughter. There's a car chase scene with aerial camera work and sharp editing. It's executed well from a technical level, but how come Bud's daughter isn't freaked out more by the fact that guys on motorcycles are shooting at them? She's just giving her dad navigation like it's just a regular day. If you look at this scene, the child actor is not in the truck during the shots where it goes up the ramp. There must be some union rules about children being involved with dangerous stunts. Makes sense, but kind of breaks immersion that she just disappears from the truck. I guess she could be lying on her side, but she's sitting upright when we cut back. In the context of the story, she doesn't know her father is a vampire hunter. At first, he gives her a handheld game to distract her, and it's a racing game. Cute enough parallel, but she finishes her race early, and then she's just helping her dad take out the dudes on motorcycles. Bud shoots his own tires to sneak under a passage where the other truck can't follow, and somehow makes it all the way home on all flat tires. Dave Franco plays Seth, the pencil-pushing geek who cares about rules and regulations, while Bud is the cowboy who plays by his own rules. 
If you take away the vampires, this movie has been made at least a hundred times. Bud has been kicked out of the Vampire Hunters Union, but he's given one last chance. He just needs to kill enough vampires to make the money so his ex-wife doesn't move away. Vampire teeth are sold on the black market, so Bud can't use sunlight to disintegrate his opponents. During the first fight scene, I kept thinking, why doesn't he just pull down the curtain, but he needs the teeth? Wouldn't there also be a market for vampire blood in order to study them and maybe isolate the genes that extend life without the whole can't go out in the sun, have to drink blood part of being a vampire? The plot is cookie cutter. The guy who came up with the story has no film credits, period. And the screenplay was written by him and another writer whose credits include Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead and the I Know What You Did Last Summer reboot. He was one of the four writers on the third John Wick movie, which is my least favorite John Wick movie, but I still enjoyed it. So yeah, the writing in Day Shift is not very good. At least the action scenes are fun, because the attempts at family drama and the commentary about the California housing market and the regulation of law enforcement are weak. There are ideas here that, if handled with more depth and nuance, could be really interesting, but this movie is simply a wacky action comedy, very light on the horror, with a predictable ending that will probably satisfy the mainstream. Day Shift is better than Bordello of Blood starring Dennis Miller, but as far as vampire comedy, I think there are a lot funnier options out there. I prefer modern vampire movies where vampires are treated with a little more sympathy and nuance, where they have some kind of humanity. But the approach of Day Shift is that when Jamie Foxx breaks into the house of a little old lady and shoots her through the stomach, we can be like, oh, that's fine, she's a vampire. What a different movie this would have turned out to be if she wasn't a vampire. That might have actually been morbidly funny. Or the scene where they break into a house and shoot these kids that are playing a first-person shooter in front of the TV. I get the dark humor, but what if these guys were good vampires? Isn't there usually a vampire with a moral compass in this kind of movie? Halfway through the movie, Seth gets turned into a vampire. Then Jamie Foxx cuts his head off. But Seth is the rare kind of vampire mentioned earlier in the film who can survive decapitation. I did enjoy the humor of watching him try to put his head back on and having trouble keeping it on as they travel around. Writers always take the approach with vampires that the second they turn, they're uncontrollably trying to bite someone, and this is what happens here. Yet after this scene, Seth is a vampire and still in control. He doesn't act evil or possessed, and at the end of the film it's just accepted he'll be a vampire, but he's one of the good ones. As far as the integrity and morality of every other vampire they slaughter throughout the film, just don't think about it, because the filmmakers obviously didn't. The excuse would be, it doesn't matter, it's a comedy. I'm gonna fart in my yogurt tomorrow and you're gonna eat my fart. The scene where the one dude ejected the bullet into the other guy's gun was the one scene that made me burst out laughing. I don't think it was supposed to be funny necessarily, it was supposed to be really cool. There's also a scene where these same guys spit into each other's mouths, and it's fine if the writers have some weird fetish, but I was a little grossed out by it. There are plenty of jokes embedded into the action scenes, but this scene in particular seemed exceptionally silly to me. It feels like it was written by a 13-year-old high on energy drinks or a middle-aged man high on coke. I can tell this movie was directed by a stuntman for sure, as the action scenes are the highlights. The family story is serviceable, yet an odd choice given that Day Shift has more decapitations than the Northmen. It's interesting that this movie doesn't have any nudity in it, showing that it's acceptable to have gratuitous violence framed around a family, just don't show any titties or ass shaking because that would corrupt children. There's one joke that seems really dated. It was a little bit of lore building around the different kinds of vampires. Spiders, Southern, and Eastern. Okay, Ubers are solo nesters. Spiders do cohabitate, but never with Easterns and Southerns. They steal their food. Now, Eastern are obviously just Asians, and apparently Eastern vampires can be identified by their fangs being the two front teeth. 
as in the old racist stereotype of the Asian with buck teeth. Even The Simpsons had a joke in the 90s about how these caricatures were dated and unfunny because they're kind of crude and mean-spirited. So oh, so. It was just one line of dialogue and it wasn't really played like a joke, it was more of a world-building line, but it was kind of eyebrow-raising. Yeah, that's an Eastern. You can tell by his two fangs in the front. Yeah, but I ain't Blaz and Crips. Getting into the writing of this movie, the writers seem to really have an axe to grind with unions and regulations. The whole premise is that Jamie Foxx is a cowboy hero who plays by his own rules, and the vampire union keeps throwing the book at him. Bye, book. It's the setup of every buddy cop film ever. The nerdy desk job guy is teamed up with Jamie Foxx to keep an eye on him, First they clash, then they bond, obviously. But the whole time, the vampire police regulations get in the way. Then the main villain is a real estate agent, and the whole thing becomes about vampire gentrification? She uses her cover as a realtor to buy up these properties all over the valley and move vamps back in amongst the rest of us. And that's when you realize this whole movie is from the perspective of someone who's pissed off about state regulations and the California real estate market. And vampires are the perfect, unequivocally evil metaphor for the California real estate agent sucking the blood out of the consumer. In the end, Dave Franco uses his knowledge of bureaucracy to help Jamie Foxx for once. And Jamie Foxx proves himself to his ex-wife and daughter. Snoop Dogg crawls out of a sewer to reference The Lost Boys, and it's over. That's what I love about LA. All the damn vampires. It's a predictable ending that will leave most audiences saying, that was a pretty good movie. Because it's safe. It's comfort food for vampire lovers. It's hard for me to decide on a review score for Day Shift, because I don't think it's a good movie, really. It's a buddy cop formula that's been done to death and beyond. Though, I enjoyed it for a Netflix movie. Netflix has been known to put out some stellar shows and some pretty bad movies, excluding auteur flicks like The Irishman, Roma, and Mank. Apparently, they're moving away from prestige films like these towards more fluffy crowd-pleasers like Red Notice and The Gray Man. I'm gonna say this is entertaining, but still below average. A 4 out of 10. If I was rating it as a Netflix movie, I would say it was 6 and 2 thirds. But I'm rating it in the general realm of fictional films, so the 4 stands. I'll at least give it the Fine University seal of approval, even though I'm giving it a below average score, because it has Snoop Dogg playing a guy named Big John wearing a cowboy hat firing a minigun named Big Bertha. That has to count for something. <laughs>